Hey everyone, I'm Mike and welcome to the Cumberland County GIS. And uh, let's jump in, let's go. So you're gonna to come to this splash screen which tells you the up-to-date notices of Cumberland County GIS. If you don't wanna share the screen again, just click the button. Otherwise, click OK and welcome in. So Cumberland County is obviously where Fedville is. If you wanna just move the map around, you can click and drag. You can also uh, double click, but sometimes I will also click and select boundaries. You can use the plus sign at the top, the minus sign. Home will just take you back out to the full view. And then the little uh, looks like a circle with some dash marks in it. That will put you to your GPS location. So if you know Cumberland like I do, Fort Bragg is right up here at the top. And we appreciate all the military service you guys do and girls, uh, guys and girls. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks so much for your service. Um, some of the map will be adjusted because of that. That's sensitive nature. You know, you shouldn't be spying on our military men and service uh, men and women. That would be bad. So you can start by typing in an address or read, uh, which is basically a parcel identification number or an owner name if you want to search. Uh, so if I wanted to look at Main Street or a person whose last name is Main, sure, why not? Let's look at that person. You just click on it and it'll take you there. One thing to note, so this is a part of ArcGIS system, is you can click on the address numbers, but you can also click on the parcels. So as you can see, I pressure clicked on the other side. So there's a address number. I clicked on the address number and I can also click on the parcel. Don't let that confuse you because if you're trying to get parcel information, you need to click on the parcel, not the address number. So this tells me a little bit of information about um, this owner. You can look at the uh, plat book and page number. So if you see, this is right off Heartland and Clifffield, three lots in. Um, and that does not necessarily, well, there's Cliffdale. Maybe this is Heartland right here. So it'd be probably lot 76 is my guess um, based off of this location. And yeah, lot 76 is right there in the property description. Has a pin number that's unique to every property. Um, but sometimes this will show you, so this plat book and page is just the map, if it has it. Some of them don't because they're meets and balance descriptions, not platted surveys like this one is. This is over at the Registered Deeds Office. And um, then it also has location information, value information, land value, building value, your land and your building. Your house has a value and your land underneath that house has a value, giving you a total value. Uh, year built, your square footage. If you're a real estate agent, uh, this is a good measure to kind of make sure you're not missing anything, but that doesn't mean that that's actually the square footage because these are county records, which could be inaccurate and most likely are somewhat inaccurate, not to the penny, as I'll say. Uh, there's a deed. So this is where she was. She purchased the property. Um, your deeds are online. Uh, sometimes it airs out like that one. So you have to go there. This is your book number, the 11294. And your page number right here is 0675. And that was recorded 2021 10 29. The revenue stamps in North Carolina are basically $2 a thousand. So if you bought a house for a thousand dollars, you would have paid $2 in revenue stamps. So by backing into that, that, uh, that number right there, multiplied by two, that's 620. So she paid $62,000 is what it sounds like for that property. Um, interesting. I, it doesn't say the sales price. Sometimes it, it, it does. And I have to look at the deed to look at the deed stamps, make sure that was accurate because this is just information, you know, the saying garbage in garbage out. So I'm assuming the three tens, right? I haven't actually looked at the, uh, it's, it's on the deed in the register of deeds office. You can also look at the tax bills. Um, that's just a link here. You'll have to search by the parcel number, which I saw, told you was the pin or the owner name find it and search through there. Um, we're gonna get through uh, tax property summary. This is probably my favorite part. So they saved the best for last when you look on the parcels. Uh, you can scroll down here, it'll tell you again, D book, same with some of the same information, tell you about the building value. And if it had a sketch, this one on this side does not have a sketch. Um, I'm gonna, let's switch over to somebody else and see if there's another one with a sketch. Um, you know, some parts, of Fedville are a little older than other parts. So, you know, some of the older parts, they may not have them. These lots look a little wider, so I was hoping, well, that's a condo association. 
um, let's click on this parcel. Scroll all the way down to the tax property summary and let's go to buildings and there's no building sketch found. So you're not gonna have any help. Sometimes there'll be a sketch there of the property. Um, there's not on there. You can also look at land, again, the deed information. If you wanna look at historical deeds, where they bought them, how much they paid for them. And you see that formula I gave you. Uh, my math must have been off. I don't know. Oh, because it's times five. Yeah, my math was off earlier. Uh, it's times, the deed stamps times $500. That was what it was. $2 per thousand. Um, uh, this is your sales comparison sales. So if you want to see, you know, what's sold nearby, this will be what's come up. And then this is a sales comparison report, which is if you've ever seen an appraisal, looks similar to it. Um, but this is more of a tax appraisal. This isn't a real appraisal. So just because your tax value says one thing doesn't necessarily mean that's accurate. Um, you know, that's the taxes value. That's different than market value. Could be higher, could be lower. Um, all right, so let's get over the top toolbar. So you can click the I button right there at the top, right in that big hand. If you want to identify uh, a layer, well, that's actually just going to give you information. So a lot of times it's identify, but you know, it's not here. It's just information. Uh, this is uh, going to be a legend. So it'll show you all these colors based off the layers you have active. And we'll get to the layers right here. So your layer list shows you all these different layers that you can turn on. So if I wanted to say, what did this look like in 2021? You can see there's a 2021 aerial photo. What did it look like in 2001? Well, you see it doesn't load because I have the 2021 on. I need to turn that one off and now you can see it. Let's see 2008. So the more recent it is, that one will take priority over an older one. Um, one thing to note, so you'll see that this is still kind of hidden behind um, some city limit. So like if I wanted to see an aerial because it's kind of um, uh, a little bit covered up there, you could come up and you would just need to turn off. It's, it's going to be a layer. I'm thinking that that layer is actually going to be a city layer. It's one of these other layers, probably the city limits layer. That was one of them. Subdivision layer. Turn those off. Now I can see it perfectly. Um, you also got a zoning layer. This tells you what your zoning is. So single family six or single family 10. Generally that means, now don't take my word for it. You gotta look at the zoning law, but how many units are allowed per acre is a lot of times what that means. So 10 units per acre, six units per acre when it comes to residential. They try to go with common sense I found, but that doesn't always mean that's accurate. So don't take my word, look at your zoning laws. Uh, you also have uh, wetlands. Yeah, look, there's some wetlands in here. Um, and taxing districts is anything, well, hey, maybe they don't have to pay taxes. Uh, soils, if you're doing maybe septic work. Uh, interesting, obviously, just to see it. Uh, public utilities, this might be one of your best layers. And you can always click the tab to the left of it. So it'll show you sewer and water. So if I wanted to see what this line is, that appears to be a sewer line. Um, and that sewer line appears to stop right there. Now, this is based off what's in the GIS. I've seen it before where there's sewer lines in the property that are not on the GIS or they're in the wrong location. So take it with a grain of salt. That's why we hit the disclaimer at the beginning that says this is uh, not always completely accurate. You also have a measurements bar. I always like this. So if you wanna do an area, so if I wanna say how big is this lot, obviously I click on the lot, but I can also click on all of these areas roughly. If you double click, it'll stop and close out and it'll say there's how many acres. If I want it in square feet, drop it down to square feet. Um, I also can clear it and I can just get, if I want, let's say the, the how, how, how long is this line? There's the feet, 222 feet, good to go. You can also print the screen by just clicking right here and choose what layout and format you want, then click print um, and then you can also change your base map, which is the base layer here. Right now we have on imagery. You do imagery uh, without the labels. Um, open street. It's not changing because I think I have that aerial layer still on. Let me turn that off. That'll help. So let's come back here. And so now you'll see that base layer is changing. 
slightly. And I, I might have a layer overriding it at the, the moment. Um, it changed a little bit, but if you have any questions, feel free to take a look around and uh, enjoy the Cumberland County GIS. Thanks so much. Take care.